So hello, my uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Stanley Chang. I work at Google. I had been working with the uh, gRPC project for uh, almost four years now. I work mostly on the client side. I'm the maintainer of um, the PHP client library and uh, and gRPC web. So um, uh, today I'm going to talk about gRPC web. Um, so uh, just a quick show of hands: How many people are familiar with gRPC? Very good, excellent. So uh, I, I don't need to go too much detail into it. Uh, how many of you are front-end engineers? All right, uh, how many are back-end engineers? Okay, okay, interesting, interesting. So uh, um, there is going to be a architecture piece in the beginning that's more back-end focus or architecture focus. Uh, the uh, second half would be uh, focus more on the JavaScript uh, code. Um, uh, so uh, there will be a bit of it for everyone. So um, gRPC uh, is a, uh, just to give you a quick overview, uh, is an open source RPC framework defined on top of uh, HTTP2. Um, it's implemented in uh, approximately 10 languages by now, uh, like English, Spanish, French, German. I'm just kidding. So uh, uh, Java, Go, C++, PHP, Ruby, C Sharp, and that, uh, and, and the list. So. Um, uh, one major feature is that uh, you can do streaming with gRPC. There's a good protobuf integrations. Uh, uh, you don't have to, um, but uh, it um, uh, uh, is a very good integration in a lot of the languages. Um, uh, it's feature rich. Uh, we have a whole bunch of features in the core gRPC library, and as well as uh, different languages will have language specific uh, features, like load balancing. You can plug in your own DNS server. Uh, deadline, retries, and all the good stuff. So uh, uh, this is a, gRPC is a, uh, a key building block in uh, uh, microservice architectures. You can deploy it in multiple uh, environments, uh, cloud, Kubernetes. Um, it, um, uh, it has been uh, uh, GAs for about two years now. So it's very mature. So uh, this is um, a uh, general uh, uh, architecture of um, how you can structure your gRPC services. Uh, notice that um, you can actually uh, string uh, these kind of gRPC services together. So you can have a Java service and access a client to ask for more data or uh, some other output from other services uh, implemented maybe in gRPC Python. So um, this is a very typical way of, of spinning up a kind of a, a client server uh, gRPC implementation. You start with a protobuf definitions uh, where you have your data types, your, uh, um, your messages, and your RPCs. Uh, uh, there's a tool to generate code into your client. So uh, usually it's a, we call it the stop classes. You import it into your client applications, uh, maybe written in C++, Java, Node, and all that languages. Uh, similar in, in, in your server side. So uh, you have a stop where you can implement your, uh, your business logic there. And then once you have that, uh, these uh, uh, functions uh, talk in gRPC. Uh, gRPC, uh, like I mentioned, is um, uh, built on top of HTTP2. So um, it has multiplexing, all the good stuff, uh, streaming and all that. Uh, same thing, you can implement your uh, services in any languages that we support. This is very typical, very easy to set up, very easy to, uh, to, 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 to make an example of it. Now, let's say we swap the client instead of uh, a no client or a go client. Can the client just be a browser client, right? Uh, can they just launch a, a node app, compile it into a, a, a browser app, uh, put it in a browser to run, and can they talk to your RPC? That would be ideal. But unfortunately, the case is not there right now. So uh, the browser runtime is pretty restricted right now. And uh, the standard web API that exposed to us, uh, XXR, fetch, uh, don't expose those HTTP wire transport details that we need to implement gRPC. So there's no concept of a channel. There's no concept of like manipulating the byte frame, uh, bytes and the frames and, uh, and, 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 and a whole bunch of uh, controls that uh, we need to implement the full gRPC spec. Uh, and in general, web browser clients prefer text data uh, for various reasons. Um, in particular, um, let's say we want to implement the full binary uh, gRPC protocol. Uh, like we, can, we simply cannot find a way to uh, implement streaming because 
Uh, the standard API just don't give us back the bytes, even if it, it is, 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 is responding in chunks, if they are binary. So um, they prefer text data, like JSON, and, 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 and in general, text-based data. Uh, response trailers, uh, which is a key part of the gRPC protocol, is not exposed to us uh, for various reasons. We have been talking to uh, Chrome and other, uh, 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 Firefox and other privates, and there are always some reasons for not implementing uh, exposing response trailers. So it's not there. Uh, and then for browser clients, there are other concerns, uh, web-specific features that uh, is not part of the gRPC protocol, like cores, uh, XHRF, and all that. Uh, and also, for a lot of these browser applications, they are deployed in like less than ideal situations, like uh, maybe it's behind some firewalls, maybe some corporate proxy restrictions that cannot negotiate HTTP2. So um, there are various reasons why, why we cannot do f a full gRPC implementation in a browser app. So uh, we try to bridge that gap by proposing a gRPC web spec. So gRPC web at the core is basically a specification auxiliary to the gRPC protocol uh, to provide a translation layer between browser requests uh, and the backend gRPC. So, um, so when uh, so we are so what we are tr proposing here is the browser your browser app would actually make a gRPC web call which is somewhat related to gRPC uh, but would work on normal HTTP uh, uh, connections. So the goal is to provide like these kind of like gRPC API familiar uh, development uh, uh, dev uh, um, uh, a process to to browser app developer so that they can write like gRPC type app. Uh, in browser client, and in the future, one day, one day, one fine day, where uh, we have all these HTTP2 details exposed to us, then we can swap out the impl uh, underlying implementation, and we, we can do much more, we can expose much more of the real gRPC uh, protocol to browser clients. So the, currently, the, um, um, the, the, the uh, translation layer is implementing Envoy, a fellow CNCF project, uh, uh, there are talks, on Envoy uh, in this conference as well. Um, we, so gRPC actually started off as an uh, uh, internal Google project. So uh, we have a similar concept like Envoy, like a, a proxy for all the front-end clients uh, to hit this API endpoint. So we actually first implemented this gRPC web filter in our own uh, 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 API layer, uh, uh, serving internal first-party app. Uh, and then we uh, are trying to implement in Nginx. Uh, there are problem that there are, there are, that implementation difficulties there. Uh, we it, it is not a, a module that was uh, de uh, delivered with the standard uh, uh, Nginx uh, di uh, distribution. But Envoy, uh, the gRPC web filter for Envoy is so it's out of the box. Today you can use the Envoy pre-compiled uh, binaries and. And gRPC Web is uh, part of that uh, standard distribution, so uh, it's very easy to use. Um, I will show you a little bit later. And uh, actually, uh, more to come. As in, like uh, as part of the gRPC Web project, we are trying to put more of these uh, translation layer in uh, the different type of proxies, uh, maybe uh, Java and Node and uh, 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 Go has a different. Uh, popular HTTP uh, server framework, so we can put uh, this kind of uh, gRPC Web uh, filter there. Um, so uh, I want to explain more a little bit, I'll go a little bit detail on the spec itself. Uh, it's supposed to work, like I mentioned, over normal HTTP, HTTP 1, HTTP 1, 1, HTTP 2 as well. Um, like the browser these days say, says that they support HTTP 2. Uh, it's kind of like under the hood and uh, not these kind of details are not exposed to us. So uh, assuming that we don't have that, uh, assuming that for various reasons it's not uh, negotiated to HTTP 2, it will still work. Uh, the, 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 the spec is supposed to uh, work with normal HTTP 1.1 semantics as well. It has a special content type identifying this browser request is a, um, is a gRPC web request. So application dash uh, slash gRPC web, uh, whether it's text or proto, I'll mention that. Uh, I'll, I'll go into the details later. One is text, one is binary. Um, the trailers, as part of the gRPC web spec, is encoded as a response stream. So uh, there's a tag that mentioned uh, that specified that this is a uh, trailer metadata. Uh, the current limitation of gRPC web is that uh, you can only make a simple unary call and server side streaming call. Like um, so, for client streaming and byte streaming, is not uh, implemented right now. So this is kind of the updated architecture of 
of, of gRPC web. So uh, you have a browser client, uh, you generate your uh, stuff from your pull definitions, you can import it into your application, and you put it like a node style or a closure style, I'll get into the details later. Uh, and it will start making gRPC web requests to an endpoint that uh, you have to control. Um, uh, for example, Envoy. Uh, it it does, the, does the translation for you. It starts the uh, GL, actual gRPC call to your backend services. So in this, in this picture, um, the, service, this, the server part is a, gen, is a very generic gRPC backend services. So uh, uh, you can completely reuse that. It's supposed to be 100% uh, interrupt there's no nothing you need to do uh, in terms of implementing special logic for in your backend services to entertain gRPC web requests. It's completely the same. Uh, um, uh, the, the the part where they talk to gRPC is actually uh, uh, talk the, the the part where your service talk to is actually uh, uh, the Envoy proxy right now. So uh, in terms of the project update, uh, gRPC web has been 1.0 GA since a couple months ago. Uh, we had gone through a, a long alpha and beta process. Uh, so uh, this is ready to use. Uh, we love your feedback. Um, uh, this is the key website, uh, gRPC.io, gRPC where you can uh, see a lot more details about the project uh, and, 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 and try an example, uh, which at the end uh, uh, we, uh, I'll go through as well. So it's a simple chatbot. Uh, for the spec and issues and pull requests, uh, uh, this is our, our, our GitHub repo. Um, uh, so one thing when uh, during the process of uh, making this GA uh, during the beta process, uh, one thing I mentioned that uh, this project started off as a uh, internal project. So we implemented using Google Closure Library because it's uh, how uh, a lot of these uh, Google internal uh, front end projects is implemented. It makes sense for us. It's easy. There's a lot of good integrations testing. Um, uh, so it's very easy for us to get started uh, using Google Closure Library. Uh, but in the process of trying to open source this, uh, we got a lot of feedback uh, from front end engineers that uh, uh, open source user, open source developer don't really use Google Closure. So uh, we need a kind of a more modern type of uh, 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 dev process. So we, uh, during that process, we added a lot of these open source um, uh, uh, JavaScript front end development frameworks. Like uh, now we have an NPM package. So you can do NPM install GRPC web, you can get the runtime library. Uh, where your generated code will use. Um, like I mentioned, it has been used internally for two years. A lot of the internal um, uh, uh, app, uh, like Google Calendar, like um, uh, Google Assistant, uh, like uh, Google Android, over the air uh, 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 activation kind of web portal is uh, under the hood uses gRPC web. So uh, the one or another reason why we want to use Google Closure is uh, cross-browser com compatibility. So we don't have to worry about uh, comp uh, browser com com compatibility. We want to uh, reach as many uh, 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 browsers as possible, and Google Closure do that for us. Uh, one quick note about Envoy: it's very easy. Uh, so on the right hand side, is you have a normal. You, you configure your uh, 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 Envoy instances normally. You 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 have your routes, uh, and and the right uh, bottom right hand corner, you have your backend services that point to your uh, gRPC services. And this is basically just one thing that you need to uh, enable in your config, uh, Envoy config is this Envoy.gRPC web filter. That's the only thing that you need to do uh, in terms of uh, enabling gRPC web. Um, this is a, one example of, of uh, implement, uh, uh, a service implemented using gRPC web is called Channel Z. So basically it's a service tool uh, to monitor your gRPC services. Um, it's, it started from internal and we try to open source it as well. Um, uh, it basically shows a bunch of debug info and stats for your backend gRPC services. Um, it's implemented in gRPC web. Uh, uh, I personally find it kind of cool right? because uh, you have your gRPC, web, gRPC services and is monitored by uh, a gRPC uh, web 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 portal. Uh, there are a bunch of other examples as well. Um, uh, we have a uh, example on uh, putting this on a uh, Kubernetes environment. I also recently found a blog post. Someone else out there tried to uh, implement put gRPC web in a kind of Istio environment, put it into Kubernetes. So uh, we are 
like we, we are fascinated by all these use cases and how people are using it. Uh, so if you uh, and your team are using GRPC Web, we would definitely like to hear it, and we're collecting all these use cases. So uh, this is, uh, this is uh, uh, concludes the first part, which is kind of the architecture, and I'll dive into the, uh, a, 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 a detail on, 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 on GRPC Web. So you start with a protocol buffer, just like most of your uh, implementing your GRPC services. You, um, you define the message types that you want to send and receive. So uh, if a hollow request that takes a name with a string, of a hollow reply message uh, is also a string. So this is very standard proto buff stuff. Uh, you can use the proto C uh, uh, tool to convert this proto into JavaScript classes. So um, you, once you run the tool, you get this hollow world underscore pb.js. You can import it into your code, in your client code, um, and you get hollow request class and a hollow reply class. And now you can use it. You can instantiate it, set the name to John, and, uh, and all good. Now let's add a uh, RPC method to your proto definition. So I'm adding a greeter service that has one simple um, method called say hello. It takes the request and returns a uh, reply. So it's a unary call, simple unary call. And similar to the proto C uh, uh, binary, we provide a plugin uh, you can use to generate the greeter class. So uh, you can, uh, and, and that will implement uh, the gRPC web protocol uh, and take care of what the under sending the, the, the request for you. So uh, one thing I mentioned uh, during the open uh, source process, uh, open source process, we noticed that uh, this uh, by, uh, this uh, plugin is hard to debug, uh, hard to compile. So a lot of the front end engineers complain to us that uh, 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 we don't want to have to compile a C plus plus program just to use a, uh, to, to, to write a front-end JavaScript code. So by now, we uh, finally have a pre-built uh, binaries for Mac, for Windows, for Linux. So it should be very easy to use, just like Proto-C uh, binary. You can download Proto-C, you can download uh, this uh, our plugin, and it should run immediately on the most common uh, platform. So uh, run this, and you get a greeter client. So same, same, same thing, you can now get a hello world underscore grpc underscore web underscore pb.js. You can uh, import your greeter client. You can instantiate it, point to your API host, API uh, endpoint. Uh, this is your final destination. Oh, actually, no. Uh, this is the uh, end, uh, your Envoy endpoint, so uh, uh, not the, uh, 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 your grpc backend. This is where uh, it should hit the uh, Envoy endpoint. So you have the client. And then you can say, say hello. This is, the, um, this is actually one of the uh, main goal of the gRPC web project is to offer a very familiar and consistent API with gRPC node. Um, uh, we actually got a lot of uh, feedback from front end engineers that uh, we want this to be a kind of a node project. Um, the, we can manage the browser part. We can manage the final thing where we compile into a browser consumable form, but we, actually want it to be a node project. So, um, so this is well, one reason why we uh, make it uh, consistent. So the uh, argument um, uh, 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 like sequence uh, is the same as the node API. So you have a request, you have metadata, and then you have the callback. So uh, we have a unary call, and now we can try to add a streaming call, a streaming method. So uh, let's say we call it repeat hello, and you can add a stream qualifier uh, to the uh, to the return side of the um, uh, RPC definition, so uh, the if you add it to the uh, request side, that's a client streaming by that streaming is not supported right now. So uh, the API for streaming, uh, we try to follow the node stream standard node stream API as well. So you have the dot on data. So uh, you start the call by calling repeat hello. You got the stream back, and on the stream there are various methods you can uh, put callbacks on to. Um, to, to, to get uh, errors and data and metadata and statuses back. So this, is, uh, this follows the uh, standard API. Now, I want to touch on, uh, on, on something that I mentioned earlier about like uh, closure and, and, and this required thing. So uh, in our CodeGen plugin, uh, we now offer four type of import styles. So um, the most uh, open source user will be using the common JS style. So the first line here, con like uh, require. So require uh, is a very common way of uh, writing, importing other module from uh, 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 other NPM modules. Um, 
But you can also write it as a Google closure style, so you can do Google.require as well. Uh, we are adding um, uh, experimental TypeScript support. Uh, this is a heavily, heavily, heavily asked feature from uh, users. So uh, we offer two ways. Uh, one is your common JS output plus a separate file for uh, 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 TypeScript typings. Uh, so you can do an import uh, uh, greeter client from this module. And we are, and, and, and our mod, and our, um, our Proto C plugin actually has a separate fourth mode to output a complete TypeScript uh, client. So this is kind of experimental right now. Uh, a lot of the front end developers felt like we are amateur, totally amateur hour. So we are definitely trying to improve that. Uh, we, um, uh, we definitely uh, welcome uh, contribution to this as well. Actually, we already got a lot of uh, contribution to try to add to it, fix bugs, and, and make it more modern. So uh, uh, like I mentioned, uh, this is a, 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 a kind of a TypeScript way of, of a, a version of writing a gRPC client now. You can say import uh, uh, as gRPC web from the NPM module called gRPC web, uh, and then you can start tagging your arguments with uh, types. And we publish a uh, kind of a minimal set of uh, uh, typings for all the relevant data types that are relevant to the gRPC web, like errors and status. Um, and, and good thing about TypeScript is that uh, uh, this even on the uh, say hello is properly typed. So if, you, if your ID is a port, your request would have all the methods that are supposed to be part of. It will show up in your ID to, to complete what the, um, what the fields are in your request object. I want to touch on uh, a little bit about the content type that I mentioned earlier. So um, we offer two modes. Uh, the default is a text. Uh, mode for gRPC web. We call it gRPC web text. It's basically a base64 encoded version of the uh, underlying gRPC web protocol. Uh, so the G underlying gRPC web protocol is binary. Uh, you have your uh, 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 header frame, you have your data frame, you have your uh, trailer frames. Uh, but like I mentioned, it won't work uh, uh, for streaming in browsers. So uh, the default is actually gRPC web text. It will look like this. It will look like uh, uh, any kind of base64 strings. Um, but if, you, if, your, if your application only ever have a unit recall, you can technically choose to uh, do the binary one. Uh, it will still work. Uh, it actually works, as in like um, the entire response, including the metadata, and it would just, go, it just, it would just reply one time to the browser, and it, it will, we will separate it back to you uh, with the data and the response and the status. So if you, ever, if you don't need streaming, uh, um, and you can save a little bit of time, uh, on, on the base64 encoding. So just a quick note on this. Uh, once you have written all this code on uh, TypeScript common JS closure style, now um, you can compile it with your favorite tool. This is the place where I got really overwhelmed uh, with in the beginning, where it turns out there are like a myriad of, of tool, front end tools to do this. Uh, if you use the common JS style, you can use npm install an NPS webpack to pack all your dependency into a browser consumable single JS that you can uh, uh, import. Or you can use Google Closure and Compiler to compile your Google.Closure, uh, Google.Require statements. Uh, for TypeScript, you use TSC, and we actually have uh, Bazel support as well. Bazel is a kind of a build system, uh, open source from Google as well, to uh, build all your dependencies. Um, all right, demo. Uh, so, um, uh, it basically has three parts. Uh, the first part is a is what I mentioned just now, where you write all your client code, you compile it, you uh, minify it, uh, and you serve it in your simple web uh, simple web server. It's just your HTML, your static stuff, and here you have your compile.js that uh, that comes with all these uh, stuff that uh, we have talked about uh, in in the previous slides. You request that, and then you host it, and the user makes some actions, maybe type something, maybe click a button. You'll fire off these RPCs, right, depending on how you write your application. It will make a gRPC web call to Envoy, uh, do the translation, and then uh, talk gRPC with the back end, and, um, and, 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 and stream back the result back. So you can do this uh, today, right now, uh, if you clone our gRPC web repo. Uh, I already pre-download uh, the uh, Docker images. So uh, all you need to do is to do a Docker compose pull uh, from, from, from uh, our repo. Uh, I already did that, so um, let me show you. Uh, nothing is running right now. I pre-pull uh, these images. 
And all you need to do is do Docker compose up. So it brings up these three images. Uh, and then you could go to a browser and hit localhost 8081. This is the port where I, uh, so actually let me show you the three. Uh, one is uh, the client. Uh, this is the uh, static stuff, uh, uh, hosting the compile, compile version of the JavaScript. And this is the Envoy um, um, uh, uh, image. And this straight up come from today's uh, Envoy uh, distributions. Uh, all I did is add a Envoy.yaml, uh, my own Envoy.yaml exposing port 8081 and pointing to and, and have the uh, traffic, all the traffic routing to this node server. This is a plain old gRPC node uh, uh, server uh, and, that can, and, and that can handle any kind of gRPC traffic. So I saw that, I hit this, so I first request the browser, the HTML and the, Java, and, and the JavaScript. So let's say I say hello. Uh, this is a simple RPC call, and uh, I get the result back. And to demonstrate streaming, I want uh, Node server to give me four hellos back, and this is streaming. So, uh, uh, and because we have, still have a little time, uh, we can do, uh, we can, let's say, let's, let's kill the Node server. So now Envoy has no one to talk to. If I do something, it will say it will it will feed back some Envoy error message, and it will trigger the uh, like error handler uh, that you add to your client code. So um, this is the demo, and uh, we know that we have a lot to do for gRPC Web. Uh, we are trying to add more support for this translation layer in uh, other uh, places uh, where. Uh, it, it depends on, 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 on where the most popular place we, uh, we, we get feedback on. Uh, this is a field that we are looking into uh, for the next year or so. Uh, we're trying to add interceptors, uh, which is a very popular demand for a feature for, uh, for other gRPC services as well, uh, and better integration into some frameworks like Angular. Uh, we get a lot of uh, ask for that as well. In the end, I want to say uh, GRPC is hiring, so uh, if you uh, have any questions, uh, and uh, let me know. Um, and one more time, this is our website, and uh, I can take questions. Yes? Oh, thank you. Yes? Yeah, so as long as it's reachable from your browser clients, so as long as it's not behind some sort of firewall, some sort of uh, uh, hub. Uh, yes, uh, uh, the question is, can Envoy do both protocols at the same time? So, uh, Envoy, uh, so gRPC Web is just a filter uh, implemented in Envoy. So uh, uh, my understanding of en how Envoy works is that you can enable multiple of these filters. And it will do uh, multiple of the things that you're supposed to do. So if your request has like uh, implemented as a gRPC web request, so it will show up as application dash gRPC web dash text, right? It and Envoy see that, it will trigger that gRPC web filter and, and, and route it to your gRPC web uh, destination. If your browser client has no such thing, it will route it to someone somewhere else. You can, you can totally control it in your Envoy config. So yes. Uh, yes. Uh, so we don't have uh, numbers right now. Um, we are more focusing on uh, development process uh, and, um, um, uh, and uh, proxy support and all that. Uh, we, don't, we, we, we are planning to uh, work on that. Uh, we don't actually have benchmark and performance number right now, unfortunately. Yes? Uh, 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 the question is, can you multiplex multiple backend gRPC services with one Envoy instances? Uh, I think so, uh, because you can have multiple routes, right? In your uh, config YAML, Envoy.yaml, you can say for this, if you hit this service, uh, match this regex, 
uh, for it to this cluster. Uh, you can have multiple cluster in your, uh, in your YAML and you have multiple routes, so yes. So as long as, um, uh, well this is part of the, uh, part of the uh, gRPC web spec, so in your client, uh, for multiple services, it will be encoded in the URL as well. So uh, your service will be different and it will hit your different regex in your, in your Envoy. Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, so uh, actually, the reason why I do this complicated thing is to demonstrate course. Actually, uh, uh, so um, uh, this is one thing that normal gRPC don't need to worry about because in browser, if you are hitting, um, if you get your stuff from, if you get your static stuff from one place and you're hitting a different endpoint, you are supposed to make a separate. The browser would make a separate request on behalf of you. That's course uh, cross origin something they to, to uh, enforce some kind of security. Um, so this, if, if for to doing that, um, normal gRPC uh, uh, backend don't deal with that, right? So uh, actually, I just want to show that this is kind of the case uh, where the normal gRPC protocol is not enough because uh, if, if, if we have to do this, the, your gRPC backend would have to respond to this course request. Um, and uh, so, so th this is just to show that um, uh, this course situation, and technically you can totally don't do this. You can totally have your Envoy, like I mentioned, uh, you can have multiple filters, right? For this, it, uh, uh, asking for static access, you can route it to a different way, uh, different places to get your static access and, and, and serve it. So you, you can totally do it in one port. Uh, this is kind of a deliberately complicated situation where I want to show course. Yeah. Yes. Uh, question is, does Proto C support TypeScript? The answer is no. Uh, I am definitely working with the ProBuff team to try to add that. Uh, the open source um, version of uh, ProtoBuff J, uh, uh, the Google impl uh, official implementation of ProtoBuff for JavaScript uh, has some sort of limitation right now. It's kind of a binary format. Um, uh, and uh, we are actually working on, internally actually there, there's a different format. It's a uh, JSON compatible uh, protobuf format. Um, we are actually in the process of trying to open source that to replace the binary uh, uh, protobuf format. Um, uh, and and uh, right now it doesn't support TypeScript. It only support uh, uh, Google Closure style and uh, CommonJS import. Uh, we are definitely working on that because we definitely receive a lot of um, feedback. Uh, TypeScript is important, but to, uh, uh, for uh, in the meantime, our proto uh, gRPC web plugin actually output the typings for the protobuf messages. So, uh, so in, it, it all have some, uh, not complete, but some typings for the, all the generated code. Uh, even if you generate in uh, CommonJS for the proto, the message part, uh, it will still have typings uh, if you use our plugin, uh, and as well as the gRPC web part. But the official TypeScript support is not there yet. Oh, yes. Oh, sorry, I, I missed that. Uh, so in this TO, they ship their own, like, customized employee? I, Does it work with this? I think so, because, just because, oh, to, 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 I, I speculate, but uh, two points. One is I actually found a, uh, a, a user uh, uh, that has a blog post that shows that he can make a simple gRPC web in this deal. Uh, another thing is uh, we had uh, uh, put this gRPC web filter in Envoy for a long time. So uh, it was uh, it was there um, almost a year ago now. So uh, it should it, even if they do, it, yeah, it's probably yeah, it probably should be already there. Yeah. Can you go back to your previous slide? Mm -hmm. I don't understand your first line there. What does that mean? Oh, so uh, right now it's in in, in Envoy, right? So uh, let's say a user don't want to deploy Envoy for ver uh, various reasons because my my app is already detect. My app is already using some some sort of proxy implementing Go similar in Java. That I, we don't have support right now. Yeah. <laughs> so great. Thank you very much uh, for attending.